Hey everyone, Shishank this side. I hope you all are doing well today and safe at home. As you can see on my screen, today we will learn another module within AWS which is AWS RAM Resource Access Manager with the help of Transit Gateway sharing from one AWS account to another AWS account. Transit Gateway again, it's one of a very important network related concept which I have already done a demo with in detail on my channel. So please go through that to get better understanding. I will share the link for the video in the description section. Now coming back to this sample architecture, let me explain a bit and then we will perform a practical demo. So we have two AWS accounts. So this scenario with the help of AWS RAM is very helpful when you have a multiple AWS accounts. So in this particular scenario, I have two AWS account, account one and account two. In account one, I have certain public and private subnet, the same scenario in account two, public and private subnet with a different CIDR block, 10 to 0016, and the AWS account one is having a CIDR block of 10.1.0.0.16 as my VPC CIDR. Now, the agenda for this particular architecture is like, I want to have a connectivity from account A to account B. So for example, let's say we have certain servers present within my account A and I want to have a connectivity in account B, then with the help of Transit Gateway and AWS Resource Access Manager, we'll be able to communicate to account B server. So basically with the help of Transit Gateway, we'll be able to make a communication between two different uh, CIDR ranges. AWS RAM, the resource access manager, what it will going to do, it will share the transit gateway to our different accounts so that we can create our configuration to make the communication happen between account A and account B. So this is just a simple scenario where you have a developer account, you have testing account, then you have a production account, and then you have a hub account. And all account needs to be communicable with each other in certain level of scenarios, right? So with the help of AWS RAM will be able to share one transit gateway to multiple accounts and transit gateway will allow us to make a communication between different accounts. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of what we are going to achieve with help of AWS RAM and transit gateway. Now let's jump to our AWS management console. I'll show you what configuration I have done or what I have to do with this particular video. Okay. So this is my AWS account one. You can see LG CTI CW. And this is my AWS account two, LG CTI CW hyphen two. So let's go to account one. Let's travel to VPC. And in a different tab, I will open another EC2 dashboard. So I have already a server running in this account, which is uh, Jenkins. So with the help of Jenkins server, we will try to ping a server in account B, which I have to provision now. So let's go to VPC of account A, your VPC. I have a VPC with CIDR block of 10.1.0.0.16. Same scenario, let's go to VPC over here. And the CIDR block of this VPC is 10.2.0016. Let me show you. Your VPC. This one. Okay. Both the VPCs are having one public subnet. I don't have a bastion host or jump host to uh, log into our private server. So that's why I'm going to use public servers. But I'll show you how we'll be able to achieve the ping response on the private IPs. If we go to the route table of this, I have uh, internet gateway assigned and nothing else. Now, if we go to transit gateway, it's totally blank. Attachment, I don't have any attachment. So first of our task is to create a transit gateway in account A and with the help of AWS resource access manager, we will be sharing our transit gateway to account B. Let's go to account A. 
here as well I have uh, certain subnets created public and private so let's go to public route table I have internet gateway and if I go to transit gateway I don't have anything over here so first task let's create a transit gateway again if you're not aware of uh, configuration of the transit gateway I'm going to do the configuration from scratch within this video as well but there is a detailed video already out on transit gateway so please go through that to get clear understanding so let's create transit gateway I will give this name as TGW West because I am in West come on description sharing transit gateway now here is an option of auto accept the shared attachment configure sharing option for cross accounts click enable and click transit gateway close this now this is in pending state this will take a minute or two to get provision completely when you create a transit gateway it creates a default route so once the transit gateway is available we will be able to see a transit gateway route in this particular dashboard okay so meanwhile let's open up resource access manager okay so this is resource access manager you can see the description is like manage resources centrally in a multi account environment increase the efficiencies decrease the cost so the best part of transit gateway is one thing like you can have uh, one transit gateway across multiple accounts but if you do the peering as well but you have to maintain a lot of peering connection if you have a multiple VPCs and multiple accounts peering can also be shared across the accounts but I prefer use transit gateway because it has a better bandwidth as compared to the peering and we can maintain and manage less resources as compared to the peering okay so you can stay compliant and all those things the benefits reduces the operational overhead as I said security and consistency and visibility and audibility auditability sorry now uh, we have to share how you can share the resource for that click on create share resource give the name as uh, share whatever it is TGW now what are the resource type you can share so here are the options that we have the option has been increased uh, a lot from AWS you can share the DB cluster capacity reservations glue catalog databases subnets transit gateway traffic mirror targets and all those things so totally depend upon you how you want to use this particular resource access manager service to share your resources across multiple accounts so since we are going to sh share our transit gateway so we have to select transit gateway now there are like two options that you can use to share your transit gateway or any other resources within different AWS account either you add the account number the external account number of AWS over here or you use organization if your accounts are added to your master account as part of an organization then click on show organization structure this will list out all the accounts that is added to your master account so this is my master account this is my member account I want to share with member account but before that what you have to do you have to enable a setting whether you want to use organization for sharing all these resources so for that go to settings section in resource access manager there is an option to enable sharing within AWS organization click on this save the settings settings has been saved now go to the resource share we have to create it again so let me give this as TG W share select our transit gateway click select it now show organization structure second account create resource resource share is created the selected resource and the principal are being added to the resource share this could take a minute few minutes to complete okay 
Now let's go back to our EC2 instance. This is already running. So let's go to VPC just to check uh, do we have our route created or not. Transit Gateway, this is available. If you click on sharing, you can see the share uh, ARN number, route. As I said, we are getting a default route. If you go to the association, we don't have anything as of now. If you go to the route, we don't have anything. It's all blank. Transit gateway attachment that we have to create to make the communication happening. Okay, so before uh, doing anything, let's go to our second account. Just want to see our transit gateway. So go to the transit gateway. You can see gateway has been shared with our second account and the owner of this account is 650 which is my master account. Now the next part uh, before creating or sharing the transit gateway attachment I just want to create an EC2 instance a uh, quick because this EC2 instance that we'll be going to use for our ping test. So let's go to EC2 instance launch an instance. The Jenkins server is running on CentOS and I'm going to use uh, let's say Amazon Linux over here with T2 Micro. This will be going to my pub instance. Let me enable the public IP, add storage, tags, TGW RAM test, security. I already have an existing SSH. So this security group is allowed with our SSH and all ICMP traffic. So allowing ICMP traffic for the ping test from all over the world doesn't mean that you will be able to ping this particular server from the Jenkins server. I'll show you that as well. Review and launch, launch, launch an instance. Now this will be going to take some time. Let's go to our master account, LGCTICW. To make your transit gateway working, we have to create a different attachment for each of the VPC that we'll be going to use. So that's a basic requirement that we have to fulfill for transit gateway. So let's create a transit gateway attachment. Select the transit gateway. You can see we have three different options and I have done all the demo for VPC, VPN and peering connection as well. Give this name as uh, TGW sharing. VPC ID is my VPC. Subnet, I'll go with only one, which is public. Create an attachment. And again, guys, you don't have to worry about private and public. This works with both network. Obviously, when you are working with a production environment, you have to choose private because most of your servers will reside in the private network. Okay, let's wait for this to come up. And meanwhile, we will go to our second account, VPC. Here also, we have to create a transit gateway attachments. As I said, transit gateway attachments are unique and has to be created for each of the VPC. So let's create the shared transit gateway, okay, VPC. We have to select this one and I have only one subnet, create an attachment. Okay. So once this attachment gets created and successful, we'll be able to see the route in our master account. So we'll be able to see the default route over here with the second VPC ID. If you go to the route, it's still showing 10.1.0.0.16. So after the transit gateway attachment on the second account is created successfully and propagated, we'll be able to see another entry over here with 10.2.0.0.16. Okay. So this will be going to take some time. As you can see, it's already populated over here. Uh, 
let me check the VPC ID of that account. This is 363A0. 363A0. It's pending. This is from the second account. Now it's available. So let me cross verify on the other account as well. This is available over here as well. Now let's go back to our AWS account one, to the route table, to the routes, and you can see we have an entry of 10 to 0016 from other account. Okay, so the next level is like we have to test. Are we able to ping this Jenkins server from another server or another server from Jenkins? Is it possible? As of now, it's not because what we have done till now, it's like we have opened a communication from VPC to transit gateway. So to make the communication from one another, we have to create a route bar traffic from transit gateway to VPC. So for that, let's go to our route table. Before that, let's log into our EC2 instance and try to ping whether we are able to get the response or not from Jenkins to another server. So for that, let me grab the SSH. CD downloads, let me maximize this. Archive, since this is Ubuntu, no, this is CentOS. Okay, so let me use CentOS. I'm connected. Let's grab the IP of EC2 instance of account 2. Since I told you I've already opened a communication of ICMP from all over the world, that doesn't mean that account A server will be able to ping account B server on private IP. So let's do a test right away. You can see I'm not getting a ping response. It's all 100% packet loss. Now to make the route back traffic, we have to go to the route table in the public route that which I'm using, create a route of CIDR block of second one, which is 16 transit gateway, save. Same has to be done on account B. Let's go to VPC. route this is the one routes okay it's already i have added over here 10100 let me check the transit gateway idea if that's correct save the route close now let's try to do ping test again here we go we are able to see the ping response from jenkins server to our new server that what we have created in account B. I will do another test from account B to account A. Okay, so this is Ubuntu. No, this is Amazon Linux, sorry. New window, let me maximize again. CD downloads. CD archive, enter, grab the IP of Jenkins, that's the one, ping, here we go. So we are able to see the response from account A to account B and account B to account A, which means our transit gateway setup is working fine and AWS RAM, Resource Access Manager sharing is successful between different AWS account. I hope this clears a lot of doubt when it comes to how you can handle network between two different AWS accounts or multiple AWS accounts. And trust me guys, this is very helpful when it, when it comes to multi-account deployment model for managing the resources. That's it guys for this particular video. Just try it out on your account, on your environment, place out a comment in comment section if you are facing any issue, I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.